Instead of fretting about who'll get blamed for the government shutdown, why not focus on who'll get the credit? Welcome to Liberty News TV. I'm Norval Rose. That's right. The real question should be, must be, who'll get the credit? Who'll get the props for standing up, standing tall, standing firm, drawing a meaningful red line against the federal leviathan that insists on ramming the poison pill of Obamacare down America's throat? Yes, the federal government is experiencing a partial shutdown as a consequence of the somewhat surprising determination of congressional Republicans. Yes, some people will suffer at least temporary financial hardship or some sort of inconvenience or interruption of plans. But House Republicans have played the funding card and call the Democrats bluff. And as of this recording, the GOP hard line is holding, holding against repeated Senate rejections of compromise funding proposals that would have kept the government going while defunding or delaying or dialing back Obamacare. Yet even as the government is shut down, the Obamacare health insurance marketplace is somehow open for business. Glitchy to be sure, halting and hiccupy, but the website healthcare.gov is bumping along, providing some limited access to the insurance exchanges. So we suppose those government workers trying to get Obamacare up and running online, those workers must be essential and therefore not furloughed. But the real question is, will healthy young Americans go online and sign up? Will those new participants, essential to the functioning of this brave new health care system, will they join in, pay up, and thus help fund and feed the Obamacare monster? And will negative opinions about the president's health care takeover scheme soften? Even as Obamacare celebrates its coming out, new polls find that only a fraction of respondents think the law will actually help them and their families. Many more think the law will hurt. And lots of folks in new surveys by various organizations say they're simply confused about Obamacare or are just out to lunch. You know what they say about first impressions. And when it comes to Obamacare, the country's first real impression should have Team Obama in need of treatment for depression. Of course, leading lefties like Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid are running around and high-fiving and crowing about the dire political consequences of the government shutdown for those mean, nasty, greedy, hateful, obstructionist Republicans. And their willing allies in the media are gleefully going along with the gloat. But we suspect that privately, when the bluster and the bully bravado have been left outside the chamber doors, the progressives with any sense of political reality are more worried than they are confident that this shutdown will play out in their favor. It's been some 17 years since the lights last went out in Washington. Times now are very different. The economy, the grassroots activism, the arrogance of this president, our faith in the future, and the mood of the country are a far cry from the days of the Gingrich-Clinton showdown. And there's this from one of the nation's leading public opinion analysts, noted political scientist James Stimson. Americans, he finds, are in their most conservative policy mood since 1952, most conservative. With Obama in the White House, there's been a marked shift in our political leanings to the right toward conservatism. And now with strong, solid, steady, reliable, outspoken conservative champions on Capitol Hill, it's time we stop fretting about taking the blame for trying to stop the Obamacare train wreck and start taking the credit for having the guts to pull the emergency brake. That is Liberty News TV for today. I'm Norval Rose. As always, we thank you for joining us and hope to see you right back here next time.